The European interest for the so-called Wild West, the dirty past of Northern America, seems to know no limitations. There are the so-called spaghetti western movies from the Italians, first and foremost from Sergio Leone, and the books of the German Karl May, and, and, and. There is a multifold fascination across all media for the time when men were still men, mysterious loners on horses, shooting, drinking, and enjoying their freedom beneath an open sky, riding into the sunset. It's easy to make fun of the myth of the Wild West, which is obviously pretty far from the much more boring and sober truth of the actual historic realities. And Sergio Leone used these opportunities, as comics like Lucky Luke did it in their way. But I guess there's more to it. Europe is for the most part a quite overcrowded place, with lots of rules and regulations, which accounts for our yearning for the wide open spaces of the West, especially since our forefathers and mothers had left Europe to escape the hardships and narrowness of the old continent. And even if some found only new misery and death in the new world, some found a kind of future. And from afar it's much easier to exaggerate and romanticize it into fantastic adventures. Anyhow, in regard of comics, Europe the European takes on the Wild West mythos are legion. From the aforementioned Lucky Luke to Jean Giraud's Blueberry, and I will devote some videos to the different European attempts at this genre, which I have to confess is a favorite genre of mine. Jim Cutlass is a series of seven European albums, most of them containing more than 60 pages, so taken the bigger format in comparison to the American page format, I guess it's fair to say this equals the content of around about 30 American comic books. The series was recently republished in German by Splitter in this extremely fancy hardcover edition. But there are of course translations into French, Spanish, Dutch and maybe some other languages. Unfortunately the only English edition I found is the collected fantasies of Möbius number 8 from 1990, in which a publisher called Epic Comics had reprinted the first album of Jim Cutlass. Jim Cutlass. And no doubt it's definitely worth to be hunted down, even if you don't get the other six issues, because the first one is the only one that was actually drawn in total by Jean Giraud aka, aka Möbius. During the second issue, Christian Rossi took over the pencil, and it's a quite smooth, almost indiscernible trans transition, since Möbius obviously drew some of the panels or cooperated with Ro Rossi in some way. But even later on in the series, when Rossi was on its own artwise, his drawings often have an incredible, almost blueberry-ish quality. Written was the whole thing by Jean-Michel Charlier, the writer on Blueberry, who died during the second album and Jean Giraud took over the writing, which shows big time in the further run of the story. Jim Cutlass, who started as a red-haired copy of Blueberry, a guy between the Yankees and the Confederation, morphed steady and slowly into a John Defoe type character. Like the central character of the Inca, Jim Cutlass is more a pawn in a game that slips out of his hands, more and more with each page, until he is unable to distinguish hallucination from reality. The story is propelled by Jim's conflicted love affair to his cousin Caroline, and even more by the schemes of his opponent, a Ku Klux Klan leader. And at some point when Jean Giraud's storytelling really took off freewheeling, free 
We are deep in a fantastic plot with a giant white crocodile, a blind albino, voodoo priest and dark magic, including some zombies. It's an incredibly luscious and compelling story, in the end rather a southern swamp tale than a wild west story. It's chock full with interesting characters, but not too complex or cluttered. And it's a good example what you can do with a good old Wild West formula when you brush it against the line. Squeeze it and morph it until something new comes out of your pencil. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.